Creating a mobile dashboard can create its own set of challenges. In this video, I want to talk about how to create a mobile dashboard from a desktop experience and what are the things to consider and what is the thought process whenever you're structuring the UX of a new mobile dashboard. Now we're actually going to go in Figma and we're going to use a live example of a dashboard which I recently created and that I posted the full tutorial on YouTube. So feel free to check it out if you want to learn how to create that dashboard from scratch. But now let's jump right into this video. All right, so the very first thing that uh, we're going to do is uh, we're going to create uh, a frame next to this uh, desktop app, which uh, we could create next to this uh, dashboard that we created in the past video tutorial. And uh, we're going to select phone and then iPhone 13 Pro Max. Uh, we could also use uh, any of the other ones, but for the case of this demonstration, we're going to go with this one. So when it comes to creating uh, uh, mobile versions of uh, dashboards, one of the most important things to consider is uh, planning and uh, considering the fact that what works uh, in the dashboard uh, in uh, the desktop version doesn't necessarily uh, work uh, in uh, the mobile version. So we need to take these uh, things into considerations and uh, we're going to start one by one by one. So in order to make this simple, uh, we're going to just duplicate this dashboard so that we're going to have freedom to kind of change these elements. So essentially this is going to be a draft dashboard, um, almost like uh, uh, artists do whenever they have uh, like uh, um, colors and you know that they need to work on and so it's almost like the color palette where you mix uh, all of the colors so we're going to make uh, this uh, smaller and uh, probably in this case in the mobile version we're going to remove uh, the name because uh, i want to keep it more clean um, usually in, in the in the desktop version you can actually keep more data but in the desktop in, in the mobile version since the the screen real estate is limited. I want to try and keep the whole experience more clean. And also another thing that we notice here is the fact that uh, in the desktop version, we do have all of the side menu. However, it wouldn't be feasible to show all of these elements right here. So we're going to need to change the UX in this case. And instead of uh, just keeping the avatar with this arrow button, what we're going to do is we're going to have a hamburger icon, which is also going to contain the avatar and its related options. So we're going to take a step back and we're going to actually go ahead and use Nucleo icons in order to find a hamburger menu. And we're going to go with a simple one, just like, uh, maybe just like this one, let's drag it in. As you can see, we are essentially adding the hamburger icon. Just want to check that it's uh, aligned uh, horizontally and to make it light, uh, but not too light, if that makes sense. And we also want to keep the hue of uh, the primary color. And here we go. All right, so we're actually going to create two versions of this mobile. First one is <clears throat> the version that's going to contain uh, all of these elements right here. And the second one is going to be the one that contains uh, these elements uh, over here. So <clears throat> we're actually going to start uh, with uh, the side menu one. So let's go over here. Let's unlock this. And uh, I'm going to grab uh, and copy and paste this right here. So as you can see, this one is, uh, is pretty simple because most uh, of the sizes are already established pretty much. Like I wouldn't even need to maintain this, this rectangle. I could simply delete it. But one of the things that I'm noticing is that I would uh, ideally have this uh, uh, go all the way to the right. So I want to keep this, uh, this orientation. Now, one thing which is useful to do is to create a layout grid and use uh, two columns. 
and uh, let's also add a little bit of a margin so we can uh, basically work uh, with uh, an organized uh, an organized way i'm going to make it lighter just so that i can see better what uh, i'm working on and i'm just going to just going to stretch these uh, wherever they make sense uh, we could stretch these ones potentially let's have a look just makes for an easier usability since again the, re the screen real estate is limited in uh, the mobile version so that's something that we need to be aware of and take in consideration all right let's bring this one to the very right at this point what i'm noticing is that we have a uh, all of these elements here, your network. I wouldn't really want to show it right away. And in the mobile version, I'm also rather, um, I'd rather just keep it into two columns, just like that, for, you know, being uh, more conscious of space. It's just an easier way to adjust for that. And uh, also at this point, uh, maybe you could, we could uh, add these or another thing that I'm considering doing simply because I want to add uh, the bottom section which uh, would be in this one here um, one from the header I'd, I'd like to have it uh, here somewhere so that you still have uh, those options and probably I'm going to change the layout just a little bit and uh, one thing that uh, I'd like it to do in this case is to have a view more call to action or even we could uh, consider having a, a button like that view more <clears throat> let's uh, center it up probably i'm going to change the style to something like that this might might make it easier for uh, the usability. Let's uh, also try <clears throat> another version with a stroke 1.5. I'm going to give it visibility of 100%. And over here, we're going to have uh, our, um, our section with you know the settings, the logout, and all that. I'm probably wanted to change this to your settings maybe have some sort of an arrow that um, makes it for a call to action not sure this is uh, super intuitive so let's actually change the avatar with uh, a cog icon i'm going to have an arrow in the mobile version so sometimes you can actually get away with these uh, changes as long as it makes sense for the overall ux and again guys it um, in, uh, in the mobile version it's uh, going to be different compared to the desktop version because you're going to to need all sorts of different uh, um, to consider all sorts of different variables which work uh, in uh, uh, mobile only all right let's change the color and we're pretty much set when it comes to this uh, this menu right here or actually let's be sure that this one is, is correct and uh, this uh, is uh, pretty much it when it comes to the side menu <coughs> so i'm going to your right side menu right here and now it's time uh, to create uh, the actual uh, dashboard so i'm going to just duplicate this one right here what i'm gonna do now is i'm going to delete these elements now it comes time to essentially figuring out uh, how we're going to implement these now this one's here i think for the most part 
it should be pretty straightforward. Just going to bring all of these elements um, on the right. However, there's an issue. Uh, we should uh, <laughs> we should either uh, just keep uh, these uh, uh, separated because we cannot show them all together. So probably what we're gonna do. And uh, by the way, here the layers are a little bit. For whatever reason, it was creating some. Uh, uh, differences so let's select these guys yeah no idea I'm just going to bring it over here and let's bring this one here and a very important uh, part of uh, designing for mobile uh, which uh, should have mentioned at the very beginning because I almost take it for granted at this point but I totally shouldn't because such an important tip is to test uh, these designs on mobile. You can either send yourself uh, a JPEG of these designs uh, uh, via email or use uh, a better solution, which might be Figma Mirror, which allows you to basically see in real time your mobile designs on your iPhone, for example, because uh, one of the hardest thing is to understand if uh, this is oversized or if it's too small uh, sometimes it looks amazing in figma but then you test it in a real device and you're like oh these input fields are too big like i need to make them smaller this text is, is oversized and you know all of that uh, um, it's just so much easier to, to just bring it directly into uh, into the original you know the native devices and uh, yeah this is going to to help you out Wait a bit. So when it comes to these other elements here, uh, which I'm going to unlock diligently, I think we're lucky in this uh, in this case because uh, for the very most part, I think these are very mobile friendly, and uh, I mean we're lucky, quote unquote, because I was already thinking of this uh, uh, before. So sometimes. You already have some <clears throat> some butters after you've done uh, this uh, this job for close to a decade now. Uh, you already kind of know what's uh, what's working, what's not. So you can kind of like bring it here, and uh, these are essentially widget apps that just need to be stretched pretty much. <clears throat> they still work fine in uh, in mobile. And uh, yeah, for whatever reason, yeah, should be like that. Okay, those ones are already adjusted. We need to bring uh, these elements. And there's a bunch of ways that we can actually, you know, go ahead and tackle these. Now I'm using Shift uh, to deep select. This makes it easier to just like these elements right here. That's another important part of the process is then user testing um, because yeah maybe if if you try it in uh, in the in the live uh, app uh, it's going to be easy for you but maybe for another user some of these things are not uh, as easy to comprehend so you always have to test all of these. Uh, all these solutions, like I'm kind of making up uh, some ideas on the fly, what I'm, uh, I think it's gonna work. But end of the day, you have to test it. You have to look at these designs. Um, you have to, you know, work on them, and then kind of like wake up the next morning, try again. And uh, yeah, in this case, I'm, I think I'm going to make it full width, simply because I want a, um, a horizontal scroll bar in uh, in this case and uh, it's probably going to be something around these lines so that you can kind of scroll horizontally through this uh, data just like that and over here in this section I want the background as well 
because uh, I think that's going to be helpful. Let's uh, bring it here to the back. Let's add this data and uh, yeah, we are pretty much set again, guys. Now it's the time to test it in, re in the real device. Uh, modify these uh, these things that no idea why they went down and uh, yeah now it's the time uh, to test all of this uh, to see if it actually work if it actually work um, and uh, just uh, send it over to you know um, also your colleagues and uh, yeah just uh, test 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 super super important part of the process when you're translating dashboards designs into mobile experiences so really hope this video was helpful and uh, i want to remind you that on my channel you're going to five to find over 500 videos on uh, ui ux design sharing my um experience and uh, i'll see you in the very next video now i'm noticing also these elements here we're going to fix them right afterwards but uh no idea why it, <laughs> it went like that but hey stuff that happens when you're doing these things live. So yeah, fix that and I'll see you in the next video.